Okay then my friends, so now we've seen a couple of different types of inputs and now I'd like to show you two more starting with checkboxes. So how do we bind to those? Well first of all let's create these checkboxes. I'll create a label first of all and um, we don't need the fault attribute for now and this is just going to say skills. So now we're going to have a series of checkboxes and next to each checkbox is going to be a skill and we tick that checkbox if the person is going to have that skill right? So let's create an input type of checkbox first of all and put after this fighting that would be a skill right and then we'll do a BR tag so we check this checkbox if they have the fighting skill I'm going to duplicate this a couple of times I'm going to change this one to sneaking and I'm going to change this one to running like so. So let me just save this and preview what it looks like. Open the modal and now we can see we have these skills right here. So we check this for fighting, this for sneaking and this for running, right? So now how do we bind to whether the user has checked these tick boxes or not? How do we tell that? Well, one way is to use the checked attribute. Now remember, if we have a checked attribute applied to one of these inputs, this is either going to be true or false. Now if I say that this is true, then it's going to be checked, right? If it's false, it's going to be not checked. And by default it's false, but we can explicitly say false here as well, and that will mean it's not checked, right? So what we could do is bind to this property. So much like we bound to the value in inputs over here, we can bind to the checked property or checked attribute in a checkbox. So we can say bind checked is equal to some kind of value, some kind of variable. So I'm going to say let fighting equal false to begin with and then I'm going to pass in here fighting. So that is referencing this variable. So now this checked property is bound to whatever this is. If this is false then this is going to be false. If this is true this is going to be true and vice versa if a user ticks this and it becomes true checked then this is updated to true makes sense right so we can do that for each one of these i'm going to copy and paste these in like so so this will be bound to a variable called sneaking and this one will be bound to a variable called running and we need to create those so let me duplicate those and change this to sneaking and change this one at the bottom to running like so. So now we're storing whether a user has checked each one of these in these three variables. And if I output these at the end, fighting and then sneaking and then running, we should see a variation of true, false, true, false, true, false, etc. So if I save that and come over here, open the modal, and I'm just going to enter in a lot of junk here. And then if I choose fighting and sneaking, then we should see true, true, false, right? Add person and we see true, true, false. So that's one way of tracking whether a user has checked an input by binding to the checked property. Now, this is OK, but it's a little bit messy, especially if we have a lot of different checkboxes, because then we've got a lot of different properties. Instead, there's another way we can use, and that is by using the grouped attribute. So let me comment all of this stuff right out, and then I'm going to show you a different way of doing this. So let me now just grab all of this. I'm going to copy it and paste it down here, and then uncomment it like so. And this time we'll take away binding to the checked property over here. We don't want that anymore. Get rid of that, get rid of that, and get rid of this. And this time we bind to a group property. So let me show you how this works. Bind group and set that equal to some kind of variable. So I'm going to call this skills and I'm going to declare this up here. Let skills and I'm going to set this equal to an empty array. Now I will explain how all this works in a second, but let me just paste these in down here. So bind to the group skills. Now we need to give each one a value as well. So the value of this is going to be fighting. We need to give this a value down here. So value is equal to, this is sneaking. And then the value down here is equal to running. So what we're doing here is saying all of these different checkboxes belong to a specific group and we're binding to that group, this variable right here, skills, which is an array. Now, whatever a user checks 
the value of that will be added to this group, this particular array right here. So if we check this and this, then the value fighting and the value sneaking will both be added to the skills array. So now we're keeping hold of all of the options that a user ticks in one single array, which I think is a bit better. So if I save this now, in fact, let's come down here and instead of outputting nose, just output skills. Let me save that and come over here, open the modal and blah, de blah, blah, de blah. 56, fighting and sneaking, add the person. Now we see we have this array with fighting and sneaking included. If we add running and take away sneaking, add the person, now we have fighting and running and so forth. So that is a nicer way of binding to these checkboxes by using a group and setting that equal to an array to track these different values, okay? Cool, so that is inputs, and let me delete all of that junk there because we don't need that anymore. The next thing I'd like to show you is select boxes. So at the minute, a user can enter in their own belt color right here in a text input, but instead of that, I want to use a select box for the belt color. So let me come down below the check boxes, and now let's do another label. Again, we don't really need this for, and this is gonna say belt color. Then below that, we need a select box. And this, again, doesn't really need a name, doesn't really need an ID. So let's get rid of that. And inside a select box, we have different options, right? So let's do our first option. And the option value is going to be black. And the text that a user sees is also going to be black. So let me duplicate this a couple of times. Let's do four in total. This time, I want to change this to orange, this black and this black, so let's change that to orange. And then this and this thing over here will change to brown. And then this thing and this thing will change to white. So this is the actual value of the option that we're tracking when a user selects this. This is just what the user sees. They don't have to be the same, but they are in this case because it makes sense. Okay, so now what we want to do is bind to the value of the select itself. So we say bind and then value and set that equal to some kind of variable, which we already have the belt color. So this thing over here. So what's going on here? Well, when a user selects this option from the drop down, then the value of the select box itself becomes the value of that option. So orange. So then because we're binding to the value, it's going to update this variable up here, belt color to whatever a user selects. And that's how simple it is. So when we're outputting belt color down here, it still should work. Let me save this and come over here and try this out. The name is gonna be Mario. The age is gonna be 30. We'll say sneaking and running and the belt is gonna be brown at the person. And now we see Mario, brown, 30, sneaking and running. If we change this to black, we can see it still tracks it. So easy as pie. That's how we use checkboxes and also select boxes in Svelte. Next up, we need a way of updating our people data over here in the app component. So we'll do that in the next video.